At the beginning of this week's parsha, we hear, after the long list of mitzvot that began in Perak Yudbet of Sefer Devarim, Moshe is now going to summarize, or basically end the mitzvah speech, and then continue with what's known as the actual Brit, the covenant that is going to ensue as soon as we enter Eretz Yisrael, the famous Brit of Har Grizim and Harival. And therefore, the question is, why does Moshe Rabbeinu begin the actual ceremony with two last mitzvot, two mitzvot that we actually heard allusions to before. If we look at the beginning of Parshat Kitavo, we find that the first mitzvah that's mentioned is what's known as Mikra Bikurim, a proclamation that accompanies our bringing of the Bikurim every Shavuot. And the question is, wait a second, we've heard of this mitzvah, not only in Sefer Shemot, but in Dvarim Perik Tzayin, V'samachta Kohol Hatov, we're supposed to bring our bounty, our harvest to Yerushalayim, to the Makom HaShayiv Har Hashem. So why does Moshe only mention Mikra Bikurim now and not earlier? Similarly, the very next mitzvah is what's known as Vidui Masrut. At the end of every three years and a six year pre shmita cycle, Maser Sheni, Maser Sheni, Maser Ani, we're required to pronounce Hashem, we did everything correctly. We did not take any of the maser that didn't belong to us. We made sure to give a tenth of our agricultural produce to the Levim and to the Aniim and to eat it properly in Yerushalayim. So that mitzvah as well was mentioned already, maser in Perak Yudalid. Why does Moshe end the mitzvah speech particularly with these two mitzvot? If we look carefully, our sense is that this is basically a summary of all of the mitzvot, of what Jewish identity is all about. Mikra Bikurim is not only a proclamation that accompanies the bringing of the Bikurim to the Beit HaMikdash, but when we recite before HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Arami Oved Avi, our father was a wandering Armenian, Avram Avinu, Yaakov being destroyed by Lavan, and Hashem, you took us out of Mitzrayim and you brought us to this land, and the fruit of the land is an expression of you bringing us to Eretz Yisrael. Moshe Rabbeinu is basically telling us this is a summary of so many of the mitzvot, especially those that are going to be relevant in Eretz Yisrael. The mitzvot Hatzliyot Ba'aretz are there in order to foster and strengthen our national history and national identity. And the other one, Vidoy Masrot, that's where we turn to HaKadosh Baruch and we say we understand the other aspect of our identity. Regardless of where we live, we have to keep the mitzvot. And Hashem, we were so careful with mitzvah observance. And that's why Moshe Rabbeinu says, this is the other aspect of your identity. Recognizing that no matter where you are, you must be stringent, you must be careful in mitzvah observance. Sometimes, unfortunately, if we're living in Chutz Laaretz, we forget about our Bikurim identity, our identity that links us to Eretz Yisrael. And sometimes, living in Eretz Yisrael, we forget our Vitoy Masrod identity, telling us to be scrupulous and careful of mitzvah observance. Moshe Rabbeinu ends the speech of mitzvah by telling us, don't forgo one for the other. You need to be a Bikurim Jew, you need to be a Maser Jew. You have to constantly be cognizant of your national identity and your religious mitzvah observance. And if so, then we end with the bracha, Hashkifa mimon kachacha, Hashem, then look, look at what we mean when we say that we stand before you as Jews and bless us, bless us ideally in Eretz Yisrael and the Eretz Avat Chalav Shabbat Shalom.